Mechanical inclination. The ability to take and look up underneath this hood at all of these different parts and tell me what each part is and what it does. So in the last video, we did the basics. We talked about the before PMCS, and then you would have your mechanics come in, do QA, QCs, and then you could dispatch the truck and do your daring. For example, one of the checks for daring would be drive down the road on a flat surface and monitor to see if the vehicle pulls left or pulls right. That would be an alignment check. What we're gonna do today is we're gonna get advanced. We're gonna go into those weekly and monthly checks that's gonna require you to break out some tools and get really experienced as far as becoming a skilled operator on these trucks and knowing your equipment extremely well. Let's get the hood up to get started. On the passenger side underneath the mud flap, you're gonna see three switches. Farthest left is your battery switch. Click it on and you're gonna hear the engine start cycling. Once the clicking stops, hold the second switch up until the engine starts. Once it starts, let it go. Go to the passenger side control box behind the BII box. Click up for raise on the cab. This is a sped up version, it doesn't go this fast, but make sure that the cab walks forward. Clear the cab first, because you can see that I dropped a garbage can and had to pick that up afterwards. Thank God nothing was broken. So as you can see right off the bat, item number one's got us really diving in, checking bolts, nuts, clamps, hoses, tubes for looseness or missing, broken or leaking conditions, tighten loose nuts, bolts, clamps. If you had anything that you found in here that was loose, now it's time for you to get a wrench out. You see where it says the figure numbers? It's giving us pictures now. Pictures that we can compare to the actual vehicle that we're looking at. Let's go ahead and scroll down to where it says under item number one, and then we scroll over to the procedure part. Keep going down. Three says air intake system, including air cleaner. We're gonna do an inspection of this air intake filter. Got the clamps, clamp, pull it off, pull it out, pull it off. Got this big bolt right here. They call it a wing nut because of how it's shaped just like a wing, so that you can actually use your hand, not have to use it. As you can see, this is not the filter from your POV. This thing is massive. Now they're made out of two types of material. One is foam, the other is paper. The foam ones you can use, you can just tap on the ground or something a little and get that dust out, use an air compressor. Blow from the inside out. Once you're done, you can throw it back in the truck, Reset your filter restriction gauge and be on your way. On the weekly portion, now that we've checked the air system, including the air dryer and the air tanks to make sure they're retaining air. And number two, going to check the nuts, bolts, clamps, and hoses, suspension, including springs, axles, including vent hoses, and the CTIS. So I went over to another truck that has the tire removed and just showing you the hub, your brake assembly, and then the actual axle itself. This whole thing that holds the two wheels together is known as the axle. The differential in the middle, also commonly referred to as the pumpkin, has an air breather at the top. This hose on your axle just allows for the expansion of the gases inside as you're driving down the road and it's getting warm to be released so that it doesn't cause a leak in your seal. So just like last time, we're gonna go ahead and scroll past some of the self-explanatory ones. They even have pictures for your convenience. But one that I do want to take note on is where it says item number five, wheels and tires. We're going to talk about that wear bar. So on your tires, there are these really cool little dots right here in between. This little dot is known as a wear bar. If your tread were to get even with it, then that would mean that it's time for you to replace it. That would be some really low tread. In the figure you see, it's just a different kind of tire. Same concept applies. Time to one, two, skip a few again, and we're gonna go to item number seven, batteries. So here's where we're getting familiar with these batteries. What it means by bulging is the side here is flat. If it was swollen out or swollen out, that means that your battery needs replaced. Another thing is checking your terminals, grabbing them, making sure that they're tight. Now, this is a 24 volt system, so don't grab two of them at the same time while touching some metal, otherwise it's gonna let you know it doesn't like to be touched that way. Checking to make sure that there's no corrosion on there. If there was, we would go get a cleaning kit and clean it off. Or if you wanna do things the easy way, 
go buy you a Coke and a smile. Item number 23, it's a weekly check, drive belts, fans, and pulleys. So now as we go through our procedure column, it is actually gonna tell us item number one is to raise the cab. If you don't know how to raise the cab, it tells you in volume number one book, work package 0024, it's where you're gonna find the instructions on how to raise the cab. As we start going down the things to inspect and check, you'll notice at some point we're gonna start getting to things that don't apply to our specific truck here. For example, it has the material handling crane. That's not our truck. Continue on scrolling through. You can see that getting deeper into the monthly part of the PMCS, it's gonna start getting a lot more physical. Right off the bat on your monthly for part one, it wants you to lower that spare tire. Let's get started. Now, if you don't know how to lower your spare tire, that's fine because you can look in your TM under that work package reference number and it's gonna tell you how. However, you got your favorite instructor here, so we're gonna go ahead and walk through it. Now, to operate this ratchet, I'm gonna reach under and I'm gonna pull up on the actual lock release handle so that I can pull it up and I'm gonna put it into its lockout slots. So this right here is gonna allow me to loosen up the actual take up spool for the ratchet. Now that our strap is released and completely out of the way, we wanna get this secondary chain off. Now there's two chains. One chain is attached to the actual drop down bar. Do not take this off, otherwise your spare tire is just gonna roll wherever it lands. The chain that you're looking for is down here. It's very hard to access with the hood down. Make sure that you get it off and completely out of the way. Our safety chain's out of the way, our strap's completely out of the way, now it's time to actually bring this thing down. Now you see the spare tire down. If you were actually changing this, just know that you want to have a Gerber or something available so that you can loosen this up, take your chain off, be able to release your spare tire. Hornets are dead. PMCS done, it worked. So now I'm gonna reach through, grab my safety chain. Now that the spare tire is checked and we know that everything's good to go, we're gonna go ahead and scroll on down. I wanna show y'all where it says item number 13, monthly. Yes, you should indeed get all of your tools out of that box, do an inventory of your tools, and if any of your tools are extremely rusty, clean them. Item number 14, time to get greasy front lifting beams. So these lifting beams are present for air assault operations or crane operations. Pull this pin out and then that pin in the back. Now I can pull it out. So you can see that just like in the technical manual, it tells you to put a light thin coat on top and on the bottom. This thing came out really nice and easy. The thin layer is still there. It's clean. If it was dirty, I would scrape it all off use my grease gun and apply another one just by spreading it on and then rubbing it around just like you see this person did before us. This one's good to go. We're gonna pack it back up. And then don't forget to do the ones in the rear of the truck. Now when it's talking about the oil can items, it's talking about the pens like these right here. Honestly, I just take a rag, put it around it and spray some WD-40 in the hole. So this next part's where we're really gonna start getting dirty. This is our grease gun. This is my protection, my gloves, preventing me from getting all this stuff all over me. So you can see that right there is what we're working with. It's time to start hitting what they call Zerk fittings or lubrication points. We're gonna use this to attach onto the end, give it a couple of squirts of grease in a lot of places. Now this little thing is called a lubrication point, a grease point. Now there are dozens of these all around the truck. Generally they're silver and they're on any part of metal that would move. You'll find them on the drive shaft on the inside You'll find them on your suspension, and you'll find it on all of your link components like your ball joints, your pitman arm, on your steering stabilizer, and on your tie rods for your turning. So now that I've cleaned it off, I'm gonna go ahead, take my grease gun, push in on it, and go ahead and give it a couple of squirts. So you will notice whenever I pulled the grease gun off, there's some leftover. It's time to clean that off. In addition to that, 
some of the old grease came out. I want to make sure that I clean that off as well. And for some of the old grease that came out up underneath, we're going to clean that as well. Now you see that the old grease is off, the new grease is in there. This thing's ready to go. Just a tip from an experienced person. Whenever you service these, I like to have a butter knife around to kind of scrape off all the old. As you can see, there are dozens of these pen locations all over and that grease is old and dirty. Somebody hasn't been really cleaning up after themselves. So the next thing that we're gonna service is your fuel water separator. On the driver's side with the engine open, located right there, it looks like that. I only have my glove off so that I can feel around. I'm gonna pull the drain hose out and I'm gonna run it into my hazmat approved container. Down into my hazmat approved container, I'm gonna reach up underneath and I'm gonna spin the nut. It says to the left. Now as a general rule of thumb, cause you can't tell what's fuel and what's not, I just fill up a whole bottle. Now remember, after you service that thing, you're gonna have a huge air pocket in there. So I highly recommend that one, you prime it to make sure that the pressure's back in there. So I'm reaching up underneath. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. It tells you that this should be done in the after portion of your PMCS, but I'll be honest with you, I only do it about once a week. Now our truck has been fully serviced. Let's go ahead and get this thing all buckled up and back together. Nothing is leaking out, and then run the truck for about five minutes. Remember to drain the air tanks, and close them back up so you don't get moisture in the system. Call it a day. I keep boys by my seat, boy. Know that they ride or die. I keep boys by my seat, boy. Day we hustle, but the night we... Know that they ride or die.